Okay guys, just a little side note. How many of you think wearing headgear is important when you're going out? I believe it's very important. Look what's happening in New Jersey. My God, the, the governor there is telling everybody in the 4th of July weekend, we cannot let you go out to the parks and the beaches because we can't guarantee you safety. So what happens? No fishing. I don't like that. But what does Chris, uh, Chris, not this Chris, the other Chris in Jersey, what does he do? He goes out to the beach and not only that, he takes his whole fam. He has the whole place to himself. Is that crazy? And when the helicopter pilot took his video picture wearing this, this visor here, he said, this is not headgear, it's a visor. Can you believe that? I don't, but hey, that's my opinion, so whatever. I'm a nobody, right? So let's start our video in here on Rotate Your Bait. Thank you. Look at that, the fish are starting to come in. They're starting to come in to the inside of the oyster bar. This is what I've been waiting for. The bait fish will come in and then sooner or later, the predators will come in following them. Okay guys, I'm back to my favorite pier again. I was starting my day on the gazebo pier, which is two piers down for me. But when the trade winds started kicking up, um, the winds were blowing directly on me and it was very hard to get my baits out. So I moved to the second pier, which I still have a line out. Uh, nobody else has come today, so I'm gonna leave my RRW there. If somebody else comes, I'll gladly take it down and put it over here on this pier, which I have my ballistic on. Okay, so today I'm gonna do something that I call rotate the bait, okay? Um, it's almost like gorilla style of fishing. So what we have here is my utility wagon. I have my cooler. This is a, actually a insulated lunch box bag, uh, but it's great for all my fishing gear that I put into it. And plus that it's insulated, that it, it's very shock resistant. Got everything else here from my personal stuff to towels to um, machete. Got my utility bucket contains just about everything I possibly need here. I did free net some crabs earlier, so I, I, I got some live bait in case I need some live bait. Got my area, my work area over here, which I'm going to show you in a minute. What I do, I call it rotate the bait, and. I have my chair with my water next to it that I, and my hat that's on it and my long handled nine foot net. So in case something goes off, I'll hear the bell go off on either ring and I can run um, to whatever has hit. So let me show you what I call it, rotate the bait. It's actually a more grill style of fishing, which is probably why a lot of people don't like fishing with me. I'm very, very, adamant of what I do I have here bloody meat this is uh, blood meat which is from the center part of the yellowfin tuna um, this is really good stinky bait and is great great for this type of fishing Okay, sorry about that. My other unit, I forgot to charge it for the last couple outings. So I had another contour unit, so I switched over to my other one. Like I said, this is um, blood meat, which is from the uh, yellowfin tuna. It's the bloody part of the meat that's in the center of the fish. And I, this is what I call rotate the bait. I have a bait here made up of blood meat. Blood meat is very, very soft. But man does it smell it has a strong strong scent to it so and you notice I have what I highlighted in my last video this is uh, what they call a dropper knot so this is actually very very good for interchanging baits and I'll show you what I mean this this is a good stuff for what I do so we're gonna do now we're gonna do what I call rotate the bait every 45 minutes I'm going to change my baits here. Take the bell off. Take the safety cord off. Ah, 
aquí it's been 45 minutes kind of interested to see if there's a bait on or not you kind of can tell by how fast easy or if there's any resistance if it's still on and right now it doesn't feel like there's anything there but we'll see it's coming in too fast and too light yep see Gonzies. not much left so what we're gonna do is rotate the bait but I don't come out here make my decision and then go back and work on making a new one because that's time consuming I like to have a couple lines in the water at all times you don't know what's gonna happen right so as you can see because of the dropper loop I am taking it off from the three-way swivel you can put it on take it off it, it, it beats tying it on because then you have to cut it all right then what I do is I inspect the line the line has no indentations on it so if there's crabs or fish eating the bait it didn't hit the line the leader line so I can reuse that again look at the color difference of the fish one that was left of the other one this is the new one I've had this done almost an hour ago and I'll show you how I did that so we're gonna put this on the three-way swivel see a lot of people they tie it on and they find that they have to cut the line and that's really humbug the dropper loop style that I use works for me it may not work for you but hell it works for me I've done this for so long take a look at that I can keep replacing replacing the line as much as I need my leader line as well as my lead line all dropper loops all with this type of three-way swivel do not get the one with the rivets because those are awful they pop the rivets pop out okay now I want to get this Right in the uh, channel there of the of the uh, river mouth of Monkey Island, because we're right across from it. I want to get at least put, push that thing out about maybe 80 yards from here. Right now, the wind's picking up again; it's pushing against me, which is not bad. It's not bad. It's over there, but over here, I can put my line where I need it to go. So I got my breakaway cannon. Take my one, two wraps. Okay. Nice throw. Now when I'm walking back, notice I, I keep my index finger and my thumb on the spool like this. So when I'm walking back, see the line coming off? See that? It's going through my fingers, it's keeping the line taut. Now that I'm back to my um, sand spike, I trip the bail. Gonna put it back into the spike. Now I tighten the line so you're gonna have a nice little um, tension on the tip. That'll show me if there's anything nibbling on, on the baits or not. And put my binder clip back on. Put my bell on. This is ready to go and I stagger them I, I stagger the time wise about 20 25 minutes between when that one needs to be done and when this one needs to be done okay so um, in about 20 minutes I'm gonna do that one it's kind of humbug when you do both at the same time time wise because then you're gonna have no lines in the water for a while this way at least you can stagger everything if, and two lines is good sometimes you can four lines just make sure you stagger them all so I like doing this. This is like tournament style when you want to keep a bait in the water at all times. Alright. 
and I'll show you what I'm going to do with the line that I just brought in. Okay, this is the uh, leaders that we just brought in. As you notice, somebody or something's out there nibbling on the bait. So, I'm just going to cut off the excess bait. Okay, I'm going to inspect the line. Okay, there's no breaks in the line or no indentations. If there was, I would replace the line right now. But I have so many replacements already that it's already pre-made. I don't have to make another one. Okay, but we're gonna, what we can do is in 20, 25 minutes from now, um, we're going to replace the IRW bait. If it needs to be, even if it doesn't need to be replaced, we replace it, all right? It, it, it's something I want to do. It's called replace the bait. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, in the time that I'm sitting down here, I'm not just fooling around. I'm actually working. I'm getting this ready for that. And when I change this one to that, that one there, I'll bring it back here and put another bait on to put on this one. Now, in between all this changing, if the leader needs to replace, I'll replace the leader. If the if the uh, line is suffering any type of damage, okay. I am trying to enjoy myself, but I also know how to be productive at the same time. This is a chunk of blood meat, very very soft, very bloody, very soft. Okay, here's a nice chunk. All right, this is a circle hook. This is a Mutsu four rod. The other one there is a BKN 20. Now the BKN 20 is virtually identical to size of the Mutsu 4 out. And as you notice, it's a circle hook, not a J. It's a circle hook. And you notice when you look down the middle, the it the tips like the offset from the factory. Great way to um, hook your fish. Plus, with this type of circle hook, you don't have to pull the line to set the, the hook because the, this hook will run along the, the, the edge of the mouth to the corners and it will set itself it's a self-setting style of hook so what we're going to do like i said this is very very soft so what are we going to do what well, we're going to put it through the hook or you're saying hey if we do this it's going to come off when we cast it especially the way i cast it okay so we're going to use our friend miracle thread all right so what I do is I start the miracle thread near the eye, right? Then I work down to the middle of the shank. And then I'm going to go towards the, the bend in the hook. And while I'm doing this, it's dripping blood all over me. Eey. like a tight piece of ham that's it look at that that's it I'm gonna put this in the cooler and this will be all ready to change for the IRW this is what you call rotate the bait it's my system of making sure that um, I don't have to fool around with these things at the last minute that when I'm there a new bait goes on comes off that rig, I'm going to do this to it, and it'll be to change this one. And everything's staggered within 20, 25 minutes. I'm doing every single one like this. This is a good system. Um, never had a problem with it. And I, I think that if you do this, you have a little self-discipline, you're going to enjoy your day a lot better. I had pre-netted some bait earlier some blue pincher crabs and a Hawaiian crab so it's always good to have backup so I get I have some live bait here if I run out of my uh, bait that I brought today so it's good to have extra so like I said in my cooler I've got the neck set up ready to go that goes back with the rest of the um, bait in the cooler and I'm gonna save that until we're done but it looks like we're not going to need a live bait here. I had free netted couple um, blue pincher crabs and a uh, red Hawaiian crab. I'm not going to need these. So it's good to have them just in case you do. But I'm going to let these go. I keep hitting the same spot. So hopefully they'll be here the next time. 
put that bucket there to dry. That's it. Okay, this is the uh, leader. See, look, it has all these little indentations on it. You can see the imperfections in the line. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut this off, the hook. Never litter. This stuff takes a, for years for it to break down the wild. I hold on to all that stuff. Okay, we're going to use some mono 50 pound because we're just using some light stuff for today. Now, if we're in, like in a like deeper water, uh, more reefy area, I'd be using 80 pound mono instead. But for places like this, ah, 50 pounds is good enough. Okay, we got our BKN hook. We're gonna make a simple palomar. Go in to one side, come back out. See, like so. You know, you notice when I start that, I always start on the inside of the hook between the barb tip and the shank. Make my loop. Put the uh, double line back through the hoop. Come around the whole hook. There you go. And wet the line down a little. Now I'm going to cinch it, cinch it down a bit. Okay. This is a circle hook, BKN 20. Notice that it's a circle, full circle with the tip coming in. Notice it's factory offset, uh, the tip's offset from the uh, center. All right. This is not a J, the J has a, the J shape. This is a circle. Like I said earlier, you do not have to, okay, save your clippings. You do not have to yank to set the hook on this because um, this will follow the lip of the curvature of the mouth and lock down into the corners. That's what it's supposed to do. All right. Now for my dropper, I double the line at the end. Okay. See it? Double it. Go, go to one time. I'm not going to go to two times. Okay. Cinch it down. Make sure, depending on your applications, I usually like about one and a half inches like that because I, I drop my uh, baits back through there. Okay, that. Now look, that's all done. Now this, today we're using blood meat. So it's, you know, yeah. let's go cut off a piece here. Like I said, ooh, the stuff is a strong smell, but the fish love it. Okay, put your hook to it. Very, very soft meat, kind of like liver, so it's not gonna hold up very well when you when you toss it out. But that's why we have our miracle thread. Love this stuff. Start off where the, the, the eye of the hook is. Just keep twirling. Uh, it's also very slippery when it's wet. And, and from, from the eye, I'm following it up to, to the, the bend in the hook. See? I'm going to back it off, come back down to how I started. And just pull and break it. That's it. Look at that. That's all ready to go. I'm going to put it in the cooler. And that will be ready for that one in about another 20 minutes. That's it. I have my little station over here. That's all I need.